Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Robin again, and today I'm going to walk you through how I do this weekly spread. Alright, starting off, I'm going to use my Micron 08 pen. It's the thickest one that I've got. And on the left side of the page, I'm going to do my daily log. On the right side, that's going to be my running task list. And I like to use a really basic script on the top. Something almost similar to what I learned in grade school, just, you know, your basic cursive. This isn't a weekly spread of my creation. I actually watched a YouTube video, which I will put here. Uh, describing exactly how this is used and I loved the idea of it it was super minimal but really really functional and right now I need something to be super functional for me because I don't have a lot of time so I tried to give this one a go and I've been using it for the last several weeks now and absolutely love it it's simple it gives me a lot of space for doodling or decorations, which you'll see later on in the video, and it keeps things written down and out of my head so that I can actually sleep at night. After I've made my header, I'm going to make bars that will go across the entire page for each of my seven days. In this bullet journal, that is four lines for every bar and then one line of space in between. So I do these tiny dashes and then I'm going to use vertical lines to create the brackets. I think on this one I'm using my Micron 02 pen. Anyway, I find that with this spread, I can put down everything that I would need to do in my daily life, whether that has to do with schooling or something that I have to do for my family. By the way, this is the Micron 005 pen, which is the very smallest that I have. And I'm going to label each of the days going down the left side of the page. And I have to check and see what date it is. It's Monday the 14th. Okay, so then I go all the way down all the way to Sunday. And then I just start writing in what I need to do on each of those days. So right now, because I am a student, I'm writing down which classes I'm gonna focus on on which day, and any assignments I know are due on that particular day. The left page with the daily log is specifically set aside for tasks that you know are going to be done on a specific day. The right page here is your running task list, and this is for non-specific tasks that need to get done, but that don't have a particular day assigned to them. So on the top right, with my thickest pen, I'm using the 08. I create a header that says tasks, and then using my Micron 02, I'm doing seven columns, one for each day of the week. And I write M T W T F S S. And then draw a thick line across the top. Now this is gonna be where I put down each one of the tasks that I have that either have been migrated over from last week or that have surfaced this week that I need to get done. I make a small bullet and then I write down the task. And then if something is partially completed, I'll put a dash through or like a slash through it. If it's complete, I go ahead and put an X. And if I'm going to work on it on a specific day, I put a bullet on that day and then a straight line leading to the bullet that's next to the task. If I work on it multiple days, it gets multiple bullets to the left. and I just continue to fill it out. I even go and visit my calendars, anywhere I might be keeping any tasks, and I try to just consolidate it here on my spread. I like to get this done on a Saturday or a Sunday before the start of a new week. That way I know exactly what I've completed the week before, 
and I can know what I need to focus on on the upcoming week. I don't like to do it too far in advance because I'm not really sure where it's going to have to go in my bullet journal. I usually do a lot of pages in between these weekly spreads, you know, whatever comes up during the week that I have to get done. And this week we're getting closer to fall time, so I wanted to get myself excited. And my family was watching, it's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. And I kept on noticing how they would do the leaves on the ground. It was just kind of like a smear of orange and, and yellow and brown with some leaf outlines. So I thought I would really like to do that on my bullet journal spread. When I think about fall, I remember growing up in New York and it was back to school season. It started right after Labor Day and the leaves would just start falling off of the trees. Of course, everyone knows about the people who go to visit New England, you know, we call them like leaf peepers or whatever you want to call them, but just people who travel to that area so that they can go see the leaves change color. And it's so true. It's absolutely brilliant to see those leaves change color in the fall. But my favorite part was that the leaves would fall. And then of course, the task of having to rake them all up because we all had yards that were filled with oak trees and aspen, not aspens, uh, what are they called? Sycamores or whatever kinds of trees where the leaves are just like these thick paper crunchy things that just fall over the ground. And so then you have to rake and rake and rake. And once we were done raking, of course, we'd have this huge pile of leaves and it was super fun to just fall into them and have leaves stuck in your hair and in your hoodie and whatever else. And then we would bag them up in the trash bags that looked like pumpkin, like jack-o'-lanterns. And I loved seeing those on the, the curb, you know, throughout the fall season and especially right before Halloween. So I thought, why not make a pile of leaves in the middle of my bullet journal spread to remind me that there are parts of the world where there's actually fall weather. I live in Dallas right now and we had a couple of days last week where the weather was absolutely gorgeous. And what I mean by gorgeous is it was in the 60s. It was, oh, it was brilliant. So cold and I had to wear socks. Can you imagine? I don't have to wear socks for more than a couple of months out of the year. And I think that probably sounds great to some of you, but for me, I I am a winter baby. I, I was born in December. My husband is from Colorado. He was born in December. We are cold. <laughs> we want to be cold anyway. And, and so it's really tough for me living here in Texas. These leaves give me the chance to remember a time when the fall was actually enjoyable and not just, you know, sweaty and humid and gross. Anyway, I used all of these uh, watercolors. I used a yellow and an orange and a brown and then let them dry. I was using the brush that came in the Crayola set uh, and it's not a great brush so a whole bunch of hairs came off of it. But you just wipe those off. Once it dried, I was able to use my pen and kind of go back in there and do some leaf outlines. And that gave me more of that like Charles Schultz peanuts look. And the leaves don't have to be perfect. I even have these little dashes in there and just kind of zigzags to add some more texture. Because when you look at leaf piles, it's really hard to kind of differentiate one leaf from the next. And that's how it turned out. I'm pretty pleased. I was happy to see that the watercolor didn't crinkle the paper and warp it too much. I think I'm probably going to start incorporating that a little bit more into my spreads. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope that this was educational and enjoyable. Please feel free to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below to let me know what you thought and let me know if this is something that you'd like to see more of. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Be well.